Hello everyone, and welcome to Up and Running, Playing with Power's deck tech series that helps you get up and running with a new deck as soon as possible. This series will teach you how to pilot the deck, main win cons, strengths and weaknesses, key card choices, mulligans, what to watch out for, and how to stop it if you're against it. Today's Up and Running is brought to you by TCGPlayer.com, where you can find all of your cards online while still supporting local game stores. Dragon Shield for all of the best accessories to protect your decks, and through Patreon where you get awesome benefits for your direct support. Today's deck is Filter Anya, commanded by Anya Falconrath. This deck seeks to assemble infinite mana and stack up infinite damage against our opponents using the World Gorger Dragon combo. So let's dive right in. This deck is a proactive deck. This deck seeks to win as quickly as possible and will utilize its commander to get there. The biggest strength for this deck is its speed. It's very common to win on turns 2 through 4. This deck effectively runs 60 cards through the use of its commander. This significantly aids in its ability to assemble the combos. The biggest weakness of this deck is its reliance on drawing cards. Because of our commander, we need to be able to rummage through our entire deck. If our ability to draw cards is hindered, we have a much more difficult time with winning. The other weakness of this deck is the fragility of its main combo, World Gorger Dragon. You will like this deck if you like playing fast games, like graveyard based combos, and like playing underdog decks. But before we go any further, let's talk about our commander, Anya. Anya Falconrath is a 1-3 vampire that costs 1, a red, and a black. Anya has an activated ability and a static ability. Her activated ability is tap, discard a card, draw a card. Her static ability is whenever you discard a card, if it has madness, untap Anya Falconrath. Anya has the inherent ability to allow you to rummage. This lets us set up our graveyard based strategies. She has the added benefit of untapping if the card you discarded has madness. This deck plays a large number of madness cards to take full advantage of her ability. So let's get into the deck. This deck wants to set up a World Gorger Dragon combo by first finding it and putting it into the graveyard. It then loops reanimating and killing World Gorger Dragon to build up mana, which is used to burn out our opponents. Our primary combo involves the creature World Gorger Dragon and one of the reanimation auras. World Gorger Dragon is a 7-7 Nightmare Dragon that costs 3 and 3 red. It has flying and trample and it has two more abilities. First, it has, when World Gorger Dragon enters the battlefield, exile all other permanents you control. Next, it has, when World Gorger Dragon leaves the battlefield, return the exiled cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. Once it's in the graveyard, we'll reanimate it with Animate Dead, Necromancy, or Dance of the Dead. Each of these return a creature from the graveyard to the battlefield and then attach itself to that creature. If the aura were to leave the battlefield for any reason, the creature it was attached to is sacrificed. World Gorger Dragon's ability may seem like a steep price to pay for a 7-7 creature, though we're going to be utilizing it to gain infinite mana. Cast a reanimation aura, reanimating World Gorger Dragon. Its ETB ability goes onto the stack. In response, float any mana you have available. Let the ETB trigger resolve. Then when it does, it removes the aura it had attached to it. The aura will trigger, causing you to sacrifice the dragon. World Gorger's leaves the battlefield trigger will go onto the stack and resolve. This brings back all of your permanents, including the reanimation aura. Use the aura to then reanimate World Gorger Dragon again. Repeat this for infinite mana. Note that if you want to stop this combo, say to cast things at sorcery speed, you will need to return a different creature from a graveyard with the reanimation aura. This could be one of yours or even an opponent's. From there, there's a few ways you can end the game. Every time our commander re-enters, she re-enters untapped. And since she has haste, we can continue to rummage with her in between the dragon loop. Using our commander, we can find and cast Avacyn's Judgment to kill our opponents. Judgment is a sorcery that costs 1 and a red, and has a madness cost of X and a red. Judgment says, Avacyn's Judgment deals 2 damage divided as you choose among any number of targets. If this spell's madness cost was paid, it deals X damage divided as you choose among those permanents and or players instead. You can put as much mana as you need into this to kill each opponent. Another way we can kill our opponents is by utilizing Alms of the Vein. Vein is a sorcery that costs 2 and a black. It has a madness cost of black. Vein says, target opponent loses 3 life and you gain 3 life. This won't one shot your opponents like Judgment would. However, you can continue going through your library by discarding Ulamog the Infinite Gyre to reshuffle your graveyard into your library and then drawing and recasting Vein until your opponents are dead. Another way to achieve infinite mana is through Dockside Extortionist and Cloudstone Curio. Dockside is a 1-2 Goblin Pirate that costs 1 and a red, and has, when Dockside Extortionist enters the battlefield, create X treasure tokens where X is the number of artifacts and enchantments your opponents control. 
Cloudstone Curio is an artifact that costs 3 and has Whenever a non-artifact permanent enters the battlefield under your control, you may return another permanent you control that shares a permanent type with it to its owner's hand. Along with Dockside, you need any other creature to cast. Have Dockside enter the battlefield, creating treasures. Cast the other creature. Curio will trigger, allowing you to bounce Dockside. Cast Dockside and make treasures. Use Curio to return the other creature. Repeat this loop for infinite treasures. Dockside will need to be able to generate more treasures than the combined total cost of him and any other creature you have. Keep this in mind before attempting this loop. Once this loop has been established, keep returning your commander to your hand, rummage, and then bounce and repeat. This allows you to go through your entire deck. Then there is the most valuable card of this deck, Shadow of the Grave. This instant is one in a black and reads, return to your hand all cards in your graveyard that you cycled or discarded this turn. After you have rummaged away all of your madness and are about out of steam, this card lets you return all of those cards back to your hand. This allows you to dig even deeper into your deck by continuing to discard through your commander. So how do you pilot this deck? You want to get Anya out as fast as possible and start rummaging cards away looking for a way to set up a combo. From there, finding a window in which to combo off is the plan. Your opening hand should have ways to get Anya out on turn 1 or 2. A good number of madness cards to cycle away is also good for plenty of Anya fuel. Additional tutors never hurt either to help smooth out our draws. In the early game, play out fast mana and cast rituals in order to get Anya on board as soon as possible. Getting her out on turn 2 is the expected pace, so getting her out on turn 1 would put you very far ahead. Once there, start to rummage away madness cards and filter your draws. In the mid game, find a window of opportunity to execute a combo. Find your outlet either with Avacyn's Judgment or with Arms of Avain, and begin your World Gorger or Dockside loops. Good times to attempt to go off would be when the blue players are tapped out of mana or when they already use their interaction on another player's attempt at a win. The late game is where this deck struggles. Since this deck wants to power out its combo as quickly as possible, its resources are mostly focused on accomplishing that goal. One thing we can do, however, is to start casting the Madness cards. Anya gives us a hefty discount on our otherwise expensive spells. In a typical game of competitive EDH, you would never want to cast a 2-4 creature with Delayed Death Touch for 5 mana. No, but doing so for 2 mana at instant speed is a much better rate. These creatures can help slow down ground-based beads coming our way, which can hopefully give us more time to set up another combo. Now that you know the main components of the deck, let's quickly go over the rest. The majority of our deck consists of cards with madness. Specifically, there are 39 cards that have madness in this deck. These are all used to effectively make our deck 39 cards smaller thanks to Anya. These madness cards are found in almost every card type across our deck, and as such have varied use. Their most important quality is freely untapping our commander. However, casting them can also have good silver bullet uses. Need to kill a creature at instant speed? Nightshade Assassin and Big Game Hunter are the ones for the job. Need a bit of spot removal? Alchemist Greeting, Dark Withering, and Ecor Slick can remove most creatures found in CEDH in one shot. What about a board wipe? Biting Rain, Psychotic Haze, and Violent Eruption are ready to raise the field. Need to slow down another player from getting ahead? Gibbering Descent and Curse of Fool's Wisdom help keep greedy players in check. We also have a couple of ways to reuse all of our Madness cards. Bag of Holding refills our hand with the many Madness cards we go through to give us more fuel for the inevitable fire. Being in black and red, we have access to powerful tutors and cards that help us set up our graveyard-based combos. Demonic Tutor, Entomb, Vampiric Tutor, Gamble, Imperial Seal, and Wishclaw Talisman help smooth out our draws and rush out our combos. We have a few pieces of stack interaction, which are often unexpected from non-blue decks. Red Elemental Blast, Imp's Mischief, Pyroblast, and Tybalt's Trickery help back up our early win attempts from initial interaction. Our mana rocks are inexpensive and need to push us as far ahead as we can get. Soul Ring, Chrome Mox, Mox Diamond, Jeweled Lotus, Mana Crypt, and Lion's Eye Diamond are all worth their weight in gold. Finally, our land base is simple yet needs to follow Tainted Packs restrictions. We have the full range of useful fetch lands and the Rakdos Shock and Dual Lands. Cavern of Souls and Emergence Zone both give us additional layers of protection for our win attempts. City of Brass, Tarnished Citadel, Command Tower, Mana Confluence, Exotic Orchard, Sulphur Springs, Luxury Suite, and Gemstone Mine are there to help ensure we have the perfect color fixing. So now that you know how this deck works, what should you watch out for? Also, if you are against this deck, what should be used to stop it? This deck is primarily a World Gorger Dragon combo deck, so stopping the combo is critical. 
Due to the fragile nature of the dragon combo, stopping it at the right time will exile Anya's entire board. If you want to learn more about the World Gorger Dragon combo, check out the Spike Feeder's Better Know a Combo video on the World Gorger Dragon. A link is in the description. This deck heavily relies on Anya to both find and enable the combo. The ability to draw many, many cards is crucial to this strategy. Cards like Hull Breacher and Notion Thief dead stop us until we can find an answer. Note that cards like Spirit of the Labyrinth and Narset Part of Veils also hinder our card draw, but don't shut it down completely. They only limit us to drawing a single card each turn, so Anya can still be used without giving our opponents anything. The ability to activate Anya is also very important. Cards like Curse Totem or Suppression Field stop us in our tracks from churning through our deck. Since both of our primary combos are reliant on Enter the Battlefield triggers, cards that prevent those will also require removal. Torpor Orb, Strict Proctor, and Hushbringer all prevent both Dockside and World Gorger from proving their advantage. Finally, since we heavily rely on the Graveyard to shortcut our World Gorger combo, Graveyard hate can be backbreaking. Rest in peace, Grafdigger's Cage, Leyline of the Void, and a well-timed one-shot effects like Tormod's Crypt or Silent Gravestone must be dealt with well before we begin our combo. We highly recommend you check out the Primer, Gameplay videos, and Discord on this deck. All links are in the description below. A big thanks to the curators of this deck for all of their hard work bringing this deck to the community. What do you think about this deck? What deck would you like to see next? Let us know in the comments below. If you want more videos like this, please consider supporting us on Patreon. You will receive all kinds of benefits for your direct support. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.